Yashar, Jasher 39. And when the sons of Yaakov went from the city of Sartan, they had gone about 200 cubits when they met the inhabitants of Tafnach coming toward them, for they went out to fight with them, because they had smitten the king of Tafnach and all his men. So all that remained in the city of Tafnach came out to fight with the sons of Yaakov, and they thought to retake from them the booty and the spoil which they had captured from Chazar and Sar Sartan. And the rest of the men of Tapnach fought with the sons of Yaakov in that place. And the sons of Yaakov smote them, and they fled before them, and they pursued them to the city of Ar Bilan, and they all fell before the sons of Yaakov. And the sons of Yaakov returned and came to Tapnach to take away the spoil of Tapnach. And when they came to Tapnach, they heard that the people of Arbilan had gone out to meet them to save the spoil of their brethren. And the sons of Yaakov left ten of their men in Tapnach to plunder the city. And they went out toward the people of Arbilan. And the men of Arbilan went out with their women to fight with the sons of Yaakov, for their women were experienced in battle. And they went out, about four hundred men and women. And all the sons of Yaakov shouted with a loud voice, and they all ran toward the inhabitants of Arbilan. And with a great and tremendous voice, and... The inhabitants of Arbelan heard the noise of the shouting of the sons of Yaakov, and their roaring like the noise of lions, and like the roaring of the sea and its waves. And fear and terror possessed their hearts on account of the sons of Yaakov, and they were terribly afraid of them, and they retreated and fled before them into the city. And the sons of Yaakov pursued them to the gate of the city, and they came upon them in the city. And the sons of Yaakov fought with them in the city, and all their women were engaged in slinging against the sons of Yaakov. And the combat was very severe amongst them the whole of that day till evening. And the sons of Yaakov could not prevail over them, and... The sons of Yaakov had almost perished in that battle. And the sons of Yaakov cried unto Yahuwah and greatly gained strength toward evening. And the sons of Yaakov smote all the inhabitants of ar by the edge of the sword, men, women, and little ones. And also the remainder of the people who had fled from Sartan, the sons of Yaakov, smote them in Arbelan, and the sons of Yaakov did unto Arbelan and Tapnach as they had done to Chazar and Sartan. And when the women saw that all the men were dead, they went upon the roofs of the city and smote the sons of Yaakov by showering down stones like rain. And the sons of Yaakov hastened and came into the city and seized all the women and smote them with the edge of the sword. And the sons of Yaakov captured all the spoil and booty, flocks and herds and cattle. And the sons of Yaakov did unto Machnameh, rather Machnemah, as they had done to Tap Tapnach, to Chazar, and to Shiloh. And they turned from there and went away. And on the fifth day, the sons of Yaakov heard that the people of Gaash had gathered against them to battle, because they had slain their king and their captains. For there had been fourteen captains in the city of Gaash. And... 
the sons of Yaakov had slain them all in the first battle. And the sons of Yaakov that day girt on their weapons of war, and they marched to battle against the inhabitants of Gaash. And in Gaash there was a strong and mighty people of the people of the Emorim. And Gaash was the strongest and best fortified city of all the cities of the Emorim. And it had three walls. And the sons of Yaakov came to Gaash, and they found the gates of the city locked, and about 500 men standing at the top of the outermost wall. And a people numerous as the sand upon the seashore were in ambush for the sons of Yaakov from without the city at the rear thereof. And the sons of Yaakov approached to open the gates of the city. And while they were drawing nigh, behold, those who were in ambush at the rear of the city came forth from their places and surrounded the sons of Yaakov. And the sons of Yaakov were enclosed between the people of Gaash, and the battle was both to their front and rear. And all the men that were upon the wall were casting from the wall upon them arrows and stones. And Yahuda, seeing that the men of Gaash were getting too heavy for them, gave a most piercing and tremendous shriek. And all the men of Gaash were terrified at the voice of Yahuda's cry. And men fell from the wall at his powerful shriek. And all those that were from without and within the city were greatly afraid of their lives. And the sons of Yaakov still came nigh to break the doors of the city. When the men of Gaash threw stones and arrows upon them from the top of the wall and made them flee from the gate. And the sons of Yaakov returned against the men of Gaash who were with them from without the city, and they smote them terribly as striking against gourds. And they could not stand against the sons of Yaakov, for fright and terror had seized them at the shriek of Yahuda. And the sons of Yaakov slew all those men who were without the city, and the sons of Yaakov still drew nigh to effect an entrance into the city, and to fight under the city walls. But they could not, for all the inhabitants of Gaash who remained in the city had surrounded the walls of Gaash in every direction, so that the sons of Yaakov were unable to approach the city to fight with them. And the sons of Yaakov came nigh to one corner to fight under the wall. The, the inhabitants of Gaash threw arrows and stones upon them like showers of rain, and they fled from under the wall. And the people of Gaash who were upon the wall, seeing that the sons of Yaakov could not prevail over them from under the wall, reproached the sons of Yaakov in these words, saying, What is the matter with you in the battle that you cannot prevail? Can you then do unto the mighty city of Gaash and its inhabitants as you did to the cities of the Emorim that were not so powerful? Surely to those weak ones amongst us you did those things and slew them in the entrance of the city for they had no strength when they were terrified at the sound of your shouting. And will you now then be able to fight in this place? Surely here you will all die, and we will avenge the cause of those cities that you have laid waste. And the inhabitants of Gaash greatly reproached the sons of Yaakov and reviled them with their Elohim, and continued to cast arrows and stones upon them from the wall. And Yahudah and his brothers 
heard the words of the inhabitants of Gaash, and their anger was greatly roused, and Yahuda was jealous of his Elohim in this matter. And he called out and said, O Yahuah, help, send help to us and our brothers. And he ran at a distance with all his might, with his drawn sword in his hand, and he sprang from the earth and by dint of his strength mounted the wall, and his sword fell from his hand. And Yahuda shouted upon the wall, and all the men that were upon the wall were terrified, and some of them fell from the wall into the city and died. And those who were yet upon the wall, when they saw Yahuda's strength, they were greatly afraid and fled for their lives into the city for safety. And some were emboldened to fight with Yahuda upon the wall, and they came nigh to slay him when they saw there was no sword in Yahuda's hand. And they thought of casting him from the wall to his brothers. And twenty men of the city came up to assist them, and they surrounded Yahuda, and they all shouted over him and approached him with drawn swords, and they terrified Yahuda, and Yahuda cried out to his brothers from the wall. And Yaakov and his sons drew the bow from under the wall and smote three of the men that were upon the top of the wall. And Yahuda continued to cry, and he exclaimed, O Yahuah, help us! O Yahuah, deliver us! And he cried out with a loud voice upon the wall, and the cry was heard at a great distance. And after this cry, he again repeated to shout, and all the men who surrounded Yahuda on the top of the wall were terrified, and they each threw his sword from his hand at the sound of Yahuda's shouting and his tremor and fled and Yahuda took the swords which had fallen from their hands, and Yahuda fought with them and slew twenty of their men upon the wall. And about eighty men and women still ascended the wall from the city, and they all surrounded Yahuda. And Yahuwa impressed the fear of Yahuda in their hearts, that they were unable to approach him. And Yaakov and all who were with him drew the bow from under the wall, and they slew ten men upon the wall, and they fell below the wall before Yaakov and his sons. And the people upon the wall, seeing that twenty of their men had fallen, they still ran toward Yahuda with drawn swords, but they could not approach him, for they were greatly terrified at Yahuda's strength. And one of their mighty men, whose name was Arud, approached to strike Yahuda upon the head with his sword, when Yahuda hastily put his shield to his head, and the sword hit the shield, and it was split in two. And this mighty man, after he had struck Yahuda, ran for his life at the fear of Yahuda, and his feet slipped upon the wall, and he fell amongst the sons of Yaakov, who were below the wall. And the sons of Yaakov smote him and slew him. And Yahuda's head pained him from the blow of the powerful man. And Yahuda had nearly died from it. And Yahuda cried out upon the wall, owing to the pain produced by the blow, when Dan heard him, and his anger burned within him, and he also rose up and went at a distance and ran and sprang from the earth and mounted the wall with his wrath, excited strength. And 
when Dan came upon the wall near unto Yahudah, all the men upon the wall fled who had stood against Yahudah, and they went up to the second wall. And they threw arrows and stones upon Dan and Yahudah from the second wall and endeavored to drive them from the wall. And the arrows and stones struck Dan and Yahudah, and they had nearly been killed upon the wall. And wherever Dan and Yahudah fled from the wall, they were attacked with arrows and stones from the second wall. And Yaakov and his sons were still at the entrance of the city below the first wall. And they were not able to draw their bow against the inhabitants of the city as they could not be seen by them being upon the second wall. And Dan and Yahudah, when they could no longer bear the stones and arrows that fell upon them from the second wall, they both sprang upon the second wall near the people of the city. And when the people of the city who were upon the second wall saw that Dan and Yahudah had come up to them, rather, come to them upon the second wall. They all cried out and descended below between the walls. And Yaakov and his sons heard the noise of the shouting from the people of the city, and they were still at the entrance of the city. And they were anxious about Dan and Yahudah, who were not seen by them, they being upon the second wall. And Naphtali went up with his wrath, excited might, and sprang upon the first wall to see what caused the noise of the shouting which they had heard in the city. And Yishakar and Zebulun drew nigh to break the doors of the city, and they opened the gates of the city and came into the city. And Naphtali leaped from the first wall to the second and came to assist his brothers. And the inhabitants of Gaash, who were upon the wall, seeing that Naphtali was the third who had come up to assist his brothers, they all fled and descended into the city. And Yaakov and all his sons and all their young men came into the city to them. And Yahudah and Dan and Naphtali descended from the wall into the city and pursued the inhabitants of the city. And Shimon and Levi were from without the city and knew not that the gate was opened. And they went up from there to the wall and came down to their brothers into the city. And the inhabitants of the city had all descended into the city. And the sons of Yaakov came to them in different directions. And the battle waged against them, against them from the front and the rear. And the sons of Yaakov smote them terribly and slew about 20,000 of them men and women. Not one of them could stand up against the sons of Yaakov. And the blood flowed plentifully in the city, and it was like a brook of water, and the blood flowed like a brook to the outer part of the city, and reached the desert of Beit Haran. And the people of Beit Haran saw at a distance the blood flowing from the city of Gaash, and about seventy men from amongst them ran to see the blood, and they came to the place where the blood was. And they followed the track of the blood and came to the wall of the city of Gaash, and they saw the blood issue from the city. And they heard the voice of crying from the inhabitants of Gaash, for it ascended unto heaven. And 
The blood was continuing to flow abundantly like a brook of water. And all the sons of Yaakov were still smiting the inhabitants of Gaash and were engaged in slaying them till evening. About 20,000 men and women and the people of Haran said, Surely this is the work of the Evrim, for they are still carrying on war in all the cities of the Emorim. And those people hastened and ran to Be'at Koran, and each took his weapons of war, and they cried out to all the inhabitants of Be'at Koran, who also girt on their weapons of war to go and fight with the sons of Yaakov. And when the sons of Yaakov had done smiting the inhabitants of Gaash, they walked about the city to strip all the slain, and coming in the innermost part of the city, and farther on, they met three very powerful men, and there was no sword in their hand. And the sons of Yaakov came up to the place where they were, and the powerful men ran away. And one of them had taken Zevelon, who he saw was a young lad and of short stature, and with his might dashed him to the ground. And Yaakov ran to him with his sword, and Yaakov smote him below his loins with the sword and cut him in two. And the body fell upon Zevalon. And the second one appeared, rather approached and seized Yaakov to fell him to the ground. And Yaakov turned to him and shouted to him, while Shimon and Levi ran and smote him on the hips with the sword and felled him to the ground. And the powerful man rose up from the ground with wrath, excited might, and Yahuda came to him before he had gained his footing and struck him upon the head with the sword, and his head was split, and he died. And the third powerful man, seeing that his companions were killed, ran from before the sons of Yaakov, and the sons of Yaakov pursued him in the city. And while the powerful man was fleeing, he found one of the swords of the inhabitants of the city. And he picked it up and turned to the sons of Yaakov and fought them with that sword. And the powerful man ran to Yahuda to strike him upon the head with the sword. And there was no shield in the hand of Yahuda. And while he was aiming to strike him, Naphtali hastily took his shield and put it to Yahuda's head. And the sword of the powerful man hit the shield of Naphtali, and Yahuda escaped the sword. And Shimon and Levi ran upon the powerful man with their swords and struck at him forcibly with their swords. And the two swords entered the body of the powerful man and divided it in two lengthwise. And the sons of Yaakov smote the three mighty men at that time, together with all the inhabitants of Gaash, and the day was about to decline. And the sons of Yaakov walked about Gaash and took all the spoil of the city. Even the little ones and women they did not suffer to live. And the sons of Yaakov did unto Gaash as they had done to Sartan and Shiloh.